class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Dr. Scott Adamson. Today's lesson is going to be uh, the second in a series. If you go back and first watch the, the video about quotient rule, this video is gonna take the quotient rule idea and apply it in a real world context. And that real world context is this. Back on August 13th of 2019, the national debt was about 22.5 trillion, with a T, trillion dollars, and that national debt was increasing by about 1.3 trillion dollars every year. On that same date, August 13, 2019, the population of the United States was about 329.5 million people. And that rate, or that uh, population was increasing by about 2.3 million people per year. So what we're gonna do is look at that context and eventually apply the quotient rule to make sense of what's happening when we think about the national debt and the population of the United States. It's gonna start like this. First of all, these two um, quantities can be thought about as function quantities. That is, the population of the United States is a function of time and years, and that function's an increasing function. Again, it's not important for us to know precisely the formula for that function. What's important for us to acknowledge is that the function exists. Likewise, with the national debt. The national debt is a function of the time in years, and that function is also an increasing function. And if we don't need to know the details, we could figure it out, but for this application, the details of that function formula are not important. The important thing is to acknowledge that the function exists and that it's an increasing function. Now, when we deal with numbers like $22.5 trillion, when we get into the trillions, maybe even in the billions, to be honest, people kind of struggle with, like, how big is that? So to kind of get a sense of how big is $22.5 trillion in our national debt, let's just play a hypothetical imaginary game. Suppose all the national debt, all $22.5 trillion of national debt was going to be equally distributed among all the people in the United States. And just hypothetically, every man, woman, and child in the United States was going to pay an equal amount to, uh, uh, to pay off that $22.5 trillion national debt. How much money would it be? So to figure that out, I'm going to create another function. I'm just going to call this function f of t. And to figure out how much money everyone would be accountable for in this hypothetical imaginary case, we would have to take that national debt being measured by d of t. So since the national debt is continually changing, we're not gonna be able to put a specific number there right now. We're just gonna say national debt is a number, it's a function of time. But if you took that national debt and equally distributed it among the people living in the United States, which is being tracked by this function P of T, we could figure out how much money per person we would be accountable for. So in terms of units, again, this national debt is measured in trillions of dollars. And this population is measured in millions of people. And if you imagine just dividing that up, the meaning of division, equally distributing all that money among all of those people, then what we would say is the amount of money per person would be whatever this would come out to be. Now, in our case, if we just kind of freeze frame a moment in time, the date was August 13th, 2019. And on that date, the national debt was $22.5 trillion. And on that date, the population of the United States was 329.5 million people. And please follow along, grab a calculator and push some buttons and see if you get the same thing I get just to confirm the thinking here. But if you take $22.5 trillion and divide it by 329,500,000 people, it would be hypothetically, think in your imagination, each man, woman, and child would be responsible for, wait for it, if every man, woman, and child in the United States paid $68,285.28, we could pay off the national debt 
hypothetically, in the United States. So we have the sobering fact that hypothetically, if every man, woman, and child in the United States was to contribute equally to the national debt, we each have to pay $68,000 plus. Now here's another interesting and maybe equally sobering thing. This number is changing year by year, moment by moment, to be honest. So we might want to look at how fast is this number increasing now, or is it increasing? Because yes, the national debt is increasing according to the current trend, but the population of the United States is also increasing. So there's more people from which to equally distribute all that national debt. So maybe this amount is not increasing, or at least maybe not increasing that fast, or maybe the additional people is allowing that amount to decrease. Let's find out. That's where the calculus comes in. We want to find out the rate at which this amount is changing. That is, we want to find the derivative. Now, since this function is a quotient of the national debt compared against that population, we want to apply, we get to apply the quotient rule. So you might have to go back and watch a previous video about what the quotient rule is and where it comes from, but here's how we would apply it in this case. The quotient rule says, take the denominator function, in this case p of t, and multiply it by the derivative of the numerator function, so d prime of t, minus, take the numerator function, in this case d of t, and multiply it by the derivative of the denominator function, p prime of t, and all of that gets divided by the denominator function squared. Now, if you haven't watched the quotient rule video, or if you haven't ever seen the quotient rule, you might be wondering, what in the world is that about? You need to go watch the video, because there's a good reason why all of that has to happen in the context of the quotient rule. Now, not only does it make sense in that video, but we can also make sense of it here in terms of the units. Let's think about units here. This is the rate at which the amount of money per person is changing per year. So we would expect the units here to be, if you look back at the original amount, it was $68,000 per person, but that amount is going to change over time. So we would expect this to come out to be a unit like dollars per person per year. So let's look and see if the quotient rule makes sense in that context of units. So P of T is the population measured in people the derivative of D. Now remember, D is the national debt in trillions of dollars, which is changing over time. So the rate at which it's changing would be trillions of dollars per year. The national debt was just measured in trillions of dollars. Notice I'm focusing on the units here, people and dollars. Whether it's trillions or millions, that's just part of the quantity, but the unit itself is people and dollars the derivative of population, the rate at which the population is changing over time, would be some number of people per year. And then in the denominator, we've got the population again, people squared. Now let's just analyze this piece by piece and see if we're gonna get the desired unit that we, that we want. So, people times dollars per year. That's interesting, people times dollars per year, minus dollars times people per year. Well, we can rearrange our units there, and dollars times people is the same as people times dollars. So these two units are really the same. It's people times dollars per year. So if you subtract people times dollars per year, minus people times dollars per year, this numerator is going to come out to be people times dollars per year. So in the numerator, we're certainly going to have people times dollars per year. In the denominator, we have people squared. Now, don't get hung up on, like, what would it mean to have people squared? Let's just think about the unit analysis overall, because overall, all of this should produce something that we understand, that the, the amount of money per person is changing over time per year. Let's see. 
So the numerator, people, times dollars per year. The denominator is going to be people squared. And so that people can simplify with, now people squared is people times people. So that can simplify with one of those people times peoples. And so we're going to be left with dollars per year per person, per people. So the quotient rule absolutely works out in the way that we would expect. Now, let's figure out. On August uh, 13th, 2019, let's just do the analysis and see by how much is the amount of dollars per person per year actually changing. So here's what we know. The population in, in August 2019 was 329.5 million people. The rate at which the national debt was changing we learned that the national debt was increasing by 1.3, now these are in billion, a trillion dollars per year. Uh, minus, the national debt on that date was $22.5 trillion. The population was increasing at a rate of 2.3 million people per year on that date. And all that gets divided by the number of people on that date squared. So keep in mind, this is the population in people. This is the rate at which the national debt is changing in trillions of dollars per year. This is the national debt in trillions of dollars. This is the rate at which the population is changing in people per year. And this is just people squared. And we know that all of that unit wise is gonna tell me how many dollars per person, but how is that changing per year? So. Grab the calculator and follow along, or push the buttons and see if you get what I get. If you multiply all this together, subtract, divide by 329.5 squared, here's what the number comes out to be. Uh, six, eight. So, in 2000, August 2019, the amount of money each man, woman, and child needs to contribute to pay off the national debt is increasing at a rate of $3,468.72 per year. So we found two things here. First of all, the original function was just a function to hypothetically, and in our imaginations, um, think about what would each man, woman, and child be accountable to pay off the national debt? About $68,000 per person. That amount is actually increasing by almost $3,500 per year in August of 2019. Now we could do this analysis on different dates in the future. We could look back in the past to see what was happening previously, but this is what happened or how things are happening back in August of 2019. I hope that helps you see how the quotient rule can be applied to analyze some real world situations and make sense of, of especially these really big and sobering numbers.